and good morning. Welcome to February the 3rd. Today we're beginning the, uh, we're going to do a short, another short book. We're covering, still covering the books of John. This time, 3rd John, chapter 1. Again, only one chapter in this book again. But it's going to be verse, we're going to cover verses 1 through 8. Half of it day, half of it tomorrow. So let's get started. The elder unto the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that it is that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have bore witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forth on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers in the truth. So here in first in third John, we're gonna see three people. We're gonna see uh we're gonna see Gaius, we're gonna see Diothrates, and then we're going to see uh, the other one is, um, I'm sorry, the other one is, I had his name right here. You know, it's one of those things that slips off your tongue. The other one is, um, see, Diophanes, and the other one is, well, I don't mind. We'll find it tomorrow. I'm not going to take my time to that today. There's three people we're going to be covering. Today, we're going to be covering the Gaius. So John writes this letter, and he's writing to Gaius, and he says to Gaius that, listen, I've heard from all around your hospitality. You know, you have, you have taken and cared about the missionaries who've come through your town. You've gathered them together. You've fed them to the point where they didn't require any help from the Gentiles. And, you know, because remember, the church at the time now was dominated by Gentiles. But these people, because of the church, the church was able to go out and do, and the, the, the missionaries were able to go out to the Gentiles and preach the gospel without asking anything back from them. You know, I worry about today these churches that have, and you may be one of the churches that have it, and I'm just telling you my personal opinion. You know, some people have a lot of sales, a lot of barbecue sales and things of that nature to support the church, to, 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 you know, to pay for the church to do things. Let me tell you, my view is that God provides the church everything that they need. And if you're out there trying to sell stuff to the lost, they think all you're about is money. Listen, we should be giving away Jesus. That's what we should be doing. Giving away Jesus. Now, should the church pay our bills? Absolutely. If we need more, we should be gathering more from our church. Can we do fundraisers within our church? Absolutely. Well, if you have a car sale or, I mean, a car wash and a stranger pulls up, can you let them? Of course you can. That's not what I mean. The point is we shouldn't be going out trying to sell raffle tickets or things like that to the church. If you, For example, if you have a barbecue chicken sale at your church for your church members and other people that don't go to your church decide they want to participate, sure, that's okay. You know, you didn't go out and advertise it to the community to come to the church, but if they knew about it and wanted to come by and get something, then that's fine. I don't have a problem with that either. The point being is Gaius gave things to the people so they didn't have to go out and beg money to be able to keep doing their missionary journeys. They were able to do what they needed to do. That's important. And Gaius was one of those guys that did everything he needed to do to do that. And John said, your reputation is going well, and I am proud. I'm pleased that you're one of my converts, that you're one of my people. You know, let me tell you, a preacher and a Sunday school teacher and a youth worker all love it to see success of the people that grew up in their ministry. You understand? People that, let me tell you, my pastor of my church today was one of my youth kids. So that's a sense of pride for me. Uh, you know, I mean, it shows you that, that he, he actually learned in our church services and in our program, became a youth worker, then was called into ministry, became a youth worker, and then became a pastor. And all that because, you know, he, he, he worshiped God. Gaius was one of those people that did what he needed to do. Are you, if you're not, if you're not being hospitable to other people, John says, that's what you need to be doing. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. We can open your book. I thank you, Lord, for Gaius. I pray, Lord, that we have more Gaiuses. Help us, Lord, to be considerate of other people. Help us, Lord, to pay our way as a church so that we can witness to others, that we can give away things to the world while we pay our bills that we need to do. You gave us everything, including our money. Help us, Lord, to be faithful servants that we may give it back to your service. For it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your time and your attention today, and we'll see you next time.